salutations everyone appreciate you coming by and clicking this video a bit of a different video uh from what you are normally accustomed to usually i just upload podcast episodes i think i haven't did a solo ish video since the q a that i did on i don't even know what episode that was but this is something i've always wanted to do something separate from the podcast my own individual videos reviewing things that i find interesting whether it be movies or television or in this case anime and in this case the 2022 anime blue lock now as far as anime fandom is concerned i'd like to consider myself a casual anime fan uh, i definitely enjoy it um like most people around my age group the 90 late 90s people early 2000s i grew up watching dragon ball z cowboy bebop uh, samurai champloo uh, animes like that, um, so I definitely consider myself a casual anime fan. I I do know other obscure, or not obscure, but I do know other things like Berserk or Akira. You know, so I'm, I'd like to consider myself a casual anime fan. I know a little more, I think, than like a super casual who just watches like the shonen kind of thing, Bleach and stuff like that. Um, and I watch different animes for sure, but for the most part, I'd consider myself a casual definitely i'm not one to watch anime like on a daily basis or even weekly basis uh honestly this is like one of the first animes i've watched in a long time uh, in terms of brand new ones and i'm really i'd say i'm really casual when it comes to like sports animes i know they're a big thing in the anime community but i haven't watched much to be honest with you i think the only one only thing that i would consider would be megalobox which actually was going to be the first review that i did here um but i just never got around to finishing the first season and my brother actually told me that the second season was good my brother is also actually the reason why i am reviewing blue lock right now because he talked about it a bunch he would always send me images from the manga which looked crazy and um and yeah he was just like we should watch it um he knows i'm into soccer vamos chivas and shout out to arsenal both who like totally lost their like championship uh opportunity this year so um, that sucked both made it like really close and totally just did not come through but hey look it's always next year right guys right um jesus so yeah my brother told me a little bit about blue lock before uh, we watched it just said it was about soccer that the animation was really cool and we decided to watch it earlier this year actually like about a month ago we watched it and finished the first season um and I absolutely loved it. I can't honestly, like, I really, really enjoyed watching it. Like I said, I'm not a big sports anime guy, you know? So I know I know they get intense. I know they're, like, anime in general can be intense. Uh, I know there's some cooking animes, animes about people be, being in the kitchen that get intense and stuff like that. So, you know, I knew <laughs> kind of what I was getting into, but I don't think I'd realize the, uh, the intensity that I was going to be, like you know brought to me uh each episode and i really really appreciate it i enjoyed it now going back to the name blue lock and if you have trouble remembering the name blue lock you don't worry because they say it about like 20 times per episode uh you could actually play a drinking game that every time you hear the name blue lock or hear the phrase blue lock you could totally like take a sip of something and and get a little get quite buzzed to be honest with you because they they mention it no less than like Ever so often, every like four minutes, it, they'll mention like someone's like, this is Blue Lock. Don't you understand? This is Blue Lock. Which I will say like, if there was any criticism I have of the show, it was just like, this is a brand new concept that they introduced. Like all these kids being in this facility and then playing soccer together and them getting better, you know, uh, playing with each other and stuff like that. But like <laughs> for everyone just to be like, don't you understand? This is Blue Lock. It's like. You guys had no pre preconceived notion of this, you know what I mean? There's no like I guess they understood the stakes, I don't know. As um I remember something got lost in translation or, or maybe, but um Yeah, it just <laughs> it, it was funny. A running gag uh with me and my brother every time we were watching it, just like how often are they gonna mention Blue Lock? Or how often are they gonna mention like someone devouring the other person? Like so many times is the is the phrase devour used in the show, which is like I don't know. I've never even heard the word devour other than like someone like killing like a plate of food. So like the fact that someone used it 
in like a sports term um it's so strange you never you never see like mcgregor telling like jose aldo like i'm gonna devour you son you know what i mean like it just doesn't it's an odd phrase i don't know if it's a translation uh thing or a cultural thing but i like it i might use it more to be honest with you so yeah going back to the concept of the show it's basically a group of teenagers who are really good at soccer are all placed in this facility uh, called blue log you know drink and uh they're all put through these like rigorous tests and 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 stages to see who will be the best striker amongst all of them yeah that's pretty much the premise of the show uh, our main guy isagi aka him sagi because he's really you know when it comes to clutch moments isagi is like a, a really really good guy which i honestly I, I that's another thing i enjoyed about the show is like so many times you get a protagonist especially in anime and they're just kind of whiny you know, or they're kind of like, uh, I don't want to say annoying, but they're kind of like, they're kind of, I don't know, they're like bright eyed, bushy tailed in a way, you know what I mean? And, and it's like, he was like that for a little bit. He was just kind of like, whoa, like shocked, like the way everyone else was like, and he definitely was that way, but I don't know. I like the, I like the fact that he, he was like being clutch early on in the show so that when he's not later on you're kind of like yeah what's going on soggy like you know what i'm saying you need some some secret juice or you know what i'm saying the secret stuff like michael jordan or what was going on here you know what i mean i also enjoyed the fact that some of the characters in the show reminded me of other characters i thought it was just myself but then i looked up other people online having the same kind of like comparisons uh that i had amongst characters for example nagi kind of reminds me of Kalua from Hunter Hunter. Uh, I don't know if it's the white hair or the pale skin, but I don't know. There was something, as soon as I saw him, I was just like, oh, that's Kalua. To the point where like during episodes, I would refer to him as Kalua. Um, it wasn't until they kept saying Nagi, Nagi, like over and over again. I was like, oh shit. Well, I guess that's his actual name. Um, who else? Kunigami. I, some of the pronunciation is like throwing me off. So I have to like you know, shout out the notes. Kunigami reminded me of Ichigo Kurosaki from Bleach. Um, I, again, the orange hair. I don't know if it was like his stature, maybe. I'm not sure. I, I honestly haven't seen Bleach in so long, so I can't remember if Ichigo is like a taller character. I know there's people taller than him uh, amongst the like ghosts or like, you know, afterlife people. Um, he definitely reminded me of Ichigo, though. He He's one that, like, up until reading his name on like on my phone, I re- would still refer to him as Ichigo, to be honest with you. Um, and he was actually a really interesting character that he has this kind of, like, not superhero, but he sees himself as, like, he's, he views soccer players or other people as heroes, as, like, people to look up to, you know what I mean? Um, role models, if you will, which I found interesting because, like, So many times you hear athletes say, I'm not a role model, or, uh, usually I watch a lot of like fights and, and stuff like that. So a lot of the fighters are always like, I'm not, I'm nobody's role model. You know, don't look up to me. You know, if you're inspired by me, that's cool, but I'm not a role model. So the fact that he was just like, I do want to be a role model. And, uh, he really reminded me of like Captain America, you know what I mean? Some Captain America, um, vibes for sure. The next one will be Gurimu. I hopefully I pronounced that right. And Connie from Attack on Titan. I don't know. I I think it's just because, like, any anime guy with a fade, I refer to him as Connie from Attack on Titan. Uh, Just because I feel like you don't really see it that often. Usually it's, like, a clean shaven head, like Krillin or something like that. It's never really, like, a a fade, like, a shaved down kind of faded hair. Um, So, yeah, he was was Connie for the majority of uh, my viewing experience. Okay, there's another one. Rachi and Bakugo from My Hero Academia. Funny thing is, I haven't really seen My Hero uh, all that much. I've only seen, like, a fir- the first couple episodes. Um, but, funny thing enough, once I saw... Let me get his name right. Rachi. Dude, he reminded me of immediately of, uh, of Bakugo. Just because, like... The, I think it's mainly the facial expressions. Because, like, their hair isn't the same. Uh, maybe it's their, their demeanor. The fact that he was always like, I've never, like I said, I haven't seen that much of my hero, so I really can't speak on him, but I just remember seeing like that expression a lot that he's always kind of like, you know, that frantic, like intense face. 
excuse me, intense face that he has. Um, and the character from, <laughs> from, uh, blue lock has the same expression. He's always pissed off. He's always like ready to kill somebody. He's always like threatening to kill somebody in every scene he's in. Uh, so yeah, I drew similarities, uh, to those two characters. Also Yasuke Nomura, uh, the actual manga artist for the, for blue lock, uh, apparently is a big fan of, uh, of Attack on Titan and specifically the Aaron Yeager and Mikasa Ackerman uh, relationship or, f- or kind of fan thing. They're meant for each other. Let's be honest with you. you know what I'm saying let's be real about it. Yeah, apparently he's a big fan of them. So there's a character named Rin who's really, really cool. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like as soon as he shows up, I'm kind of like super swaggy, very like clean with it. You know what I mean? Like he got like a lot of drip. A lot of, uh, is it Riz? I really don't know what it's called. <laughs> I keep seeing it on Twitter. But um, he's a cool guy, man. He's really, really cool. And his design, apparently, uh, is based on if on on if Aaron and Mikasa from Attack on Titan had a kid or had a child or a boy, I, I suppose. Uh, I had seen it on Twitter on the Blue Lock Fan Facts or Blue Lock, I forgot what the name was, but Blue Lock Facts or something like that. They tweeted about it. And they were saying how um, how Rin's design is that of Mikasa and Aaron's, you know, supposed child. And uh, you could definitely see it, especially uh, specifically the eyelashes. And um, he has that kind of like, especially season four, uh, Mikasa, like that kind of like blank kind of, it's almost a depressed, to be honest with you. It's kind of a depressed expression Mikasa and Levi uh, both have on their faces. It's kind of like very like i don't know blank almost it's not not blank because there is emotion there but it's just like down and 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 uh, melancholy to be honest with you they have like a very melancholy uh facial expression about them that ren carries throughout the whole show without being too specific i do want to talk about some of the the character centric episodes they have they have a couple um i believe they have like three and that i had that come to mind but there's two that i really wanted to talk about one who's actually my favorite character on the show, Hioma Chigiri, um, who was like this, like, I don't want to say prodigy, but this like teenage, um, like phenomenal soccer player. Uh, he's very, very fast. Uh, and they have a whole episode just talking about his whole story. And it's funny seeing him like as a teenager, he's like very preppy, very like, you know what I mean? Um, I'm going to say it. He's like a uh, varsity, you know, he's kind of like this varsity athlete, very like they refer to him as a genius early on in the episode. I, like I said, I want to get too specific, but um, he ends up having an injury and uh, it sidelines him. And, and his whole episode kind of like deals with him getting over the fear that he has of re-injuring himself. Um, and it gets to the point where like he just kind of like, you know, gets over it and, and, and goes forward and and man, his like his aura is also really dope. I'm gonna get into it later, but man, like it's really, really interesting to see how they do it for each character. Um and him him specifically, I don't know. Maybe because like I'm not sure why I related to him so much. Um I wrestled during high school, so I don't know if that had anything to do with it. And I also had to deal with with injuries, um on the mat and, and stuff like that and having to miss part of the season and being bummed out about it. I don't know if that, you know, is the reason why he's my favorite character, but um, just seeing him be stressed out and seeing how, how people treated him uh, after his injury and they kind of like, not clowned him, but they were like, oh my God, he used to be a genius. He used to be this and that. And I was just like, bro, he's hurt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Leave him alone. He's really good. Um, and I'm so glad he gets a show out. And uh, yeah, his episode is one of my favorite Another one of my favorite is Bachira, who's uh, actually my brother's favorite character. Um, <laughs> and it's funny because he told me he's like, he's like, yeah, it's my favorite character. And like his first appearance, he's like ready to start like throwing hands with somebody or he's like goofing around. And then like once they they get selected on their own team and stuff, and he's with Asagi, he's like <laughs> totally nude in every other scene he's in. Uh, and I was like, this is your favorite character, huh? And, and he was just like, man, you don't even know, like, wait till you see his episode or see his backstory. And I got to say his episode was really, really touching. Um, pro- I think, I think it's technically better than, than Chigiri. I think I just love Chigiri as a character, 
but man Bachiras is really really deep uh i don't want to spoil anything like i said but he goes into like his love of soccer and how he is a true like he just enjoys the game he he, he could care less about the competitiveness or he could care less about anything else he just enjoys the flow and uh he just enjoys playing with playing soccer he, he just always has as a kid also like seeing him as a child was so adorable because he's like an adorable like the way they animated him was like a cute kid um and his mom shout out to bachida's mom bro his mom is like so deep she had some lines that were like man i'm not gonna lie dude that's the only part of the show where i felt like wow this is like some deep deep stuff and they have that ever so often um these deep episodes or like these deep uh lines in the script um these deep lines were like even ego who i haven't really touched on but he kind of like is running the whole program of blue lock he has these like real deep he has these real deep deep like conversations about like winning mentality and what it means to be a striker and all this stuff like that and bachita's mom in in his episode is also talking about how you know, people have that voice in their head, their dream, you know what I mean? They're, they're some voice in their head or the voice that speaks to them about like their dreams and their like aspirations for things and how like <laughs> it was really like really, really deep. Like as it goes on or sorry, as as people get older, that voice of their aspirations and dreams kind of gets quieter and quieter. And I was like, Jesus Christ, what's going on? Like. I didn't expect to get any of that from a soccer show. You know what I mean? It was real, real deep. And uh, I mean, this what I'm doing right here. Would I would consider it a dream um, to do this full time eventually, hopefully. Um, so the fact that she was like saying that stuff and I had the idea of, of reviewing this and reviewing other things other than just the podcast. Cause that's kind of what I've been like in terms of creatively that and my photography of like what I do um, outside of my regular like work job. <laughs> work job outside of my regular like job 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 um yeah her saying that really like just got me man i was like wow this is like heavy but it's true you know what i mean i, th I feel like a lot of people kind of lose that and and i always try to tell my friends hey man like i have a lot of friends who do music or they used to do music and they kind of stopped or you know they haven't messed around with it they haven't released anything or you know yeah i have some stuff but i haven't released it like dude release it like play around with it go back to it go back and like read those scripts go back and read those stuff because like just don't lose that creativity man i know that bills and and other things kind of bring us down and not i would say bring us down but they kind of you know they make us get into a routine of like yo i gotta pay this i gotta check these boxes off but um oh man if if i could send a message to anyone out there um is just to stay creative for sure um, a little side tangent there, but, um, it's probably the best episode technically on the show in terms of the writing, in terms of everything. I thought it was phenomenal. Um, and it honestly made me appreciate Bachira as a character. Cause at first I was just like, who is this like goofy, you know, kind of like lackadaisical, like, ah, it's all fun. You know what I mean? And you get to see him get the fire and, uh, the competitive spirit. Shout out to the, whoever wrote that. Um, Yeah. It was it was really really well done and uh definitely one of the best of the show you know piggybacking off of that i do want to talk about ego the guy who is kind of in charge of blue lock and has all the responsibility of like putting these teenagers through all these rigorous things and and um and having them be the best you know striker as a character i don't know at first honestly i was kind of like he's kind of he was kind of my least favorite part of the show in the beginning to be honest with you um, and actually like in terms of characters, he looks like, he totally looks like Mandar from Dexter's laboratory. Um, I think that's his name. I mean, I'm actually going to look that up cause I don't want to get that wrong and, and have to edit it out. Mandark. Ego totally looks like Mandark, bro. So and that's the character he looks like. But yeah, as a character, at first I was kind of like iffy on him. I was like, who is this guy? Why is he like, why do they have to have like a face? You know what I mean? A face of the bad guy and stuff like that. But I get it. And honestly, his progression on the show is really well done, and um, you kind of get the get into the psyche of him. Uh, I will say this: there's like one part that my brother says will make more sense in the second season, so I don't want to even get into it. But um, there's one moment towards the end where I was like, "Damn!" Like, 
was this his whole plan? Like, if that didn't work out, like, you'd had no, like, backup plan. But um, apparently in season two, it'll get explained. Um, but like I said, I was mentioning him during the Bachida episode, but he has some lines that are just like, wow, like, really cutthroat and really, like, some Michael Jordan slash, like, Mamba, Kobe Bryant mentality. You know what I mean? Some real, like, to be the best you got to do this to be the best. You got to do all that stuff. You know what I mean? To, to be the best there is like, you always got some like coals or diamonds, like, Oh, my diamonds or something like that. Like diamonds in a rough kind of thing. So that was really cool. He's a, he's, a, he's an interesting character. And I, my brother says in, uh, hopefully in season two, or in, I think he reads the books, he reads the manga. So like, I think they explain his backstory a little bit more, which I am curious of, you know what I mean? I am curious, like, how did he end up here? You know, what I imagine he's a former player. I think that's what I gathered from what my brother was telling me, but interesting character for sure. And, uh, he's not there too much to the point where it's kind of like, all right, this is like ridiculous. I'm sick of seeing this guy. But when he pops up, it's kind of like, Oh, what is the, you know, what's next or what's, what's going on? What's the next stage? What's the next process? What's the next level for these guys? The last character I'd want to talk about before ending the review is Boro. Uh, Boro and Rin, I'll probably talk about both of them for a little bit, but Boro is like this, like, t- he reminds me of Ronaldo, to be honest with you, he reminds me of Cristiano Ronaldo, just his, like, his stature, he's very, uh, I don't want to say Ronaldo's arrogant, but he's, you know, he's a very confident guy, you know, in his skills, and he's very, like, I'm the top dog, you know what I'm saying, very, like, trying to be the alpha amongst the pack, and his aura, you know, I was talking about the auras earlier with the Sagi, his aura is, like, really sick, he has, like, a lion, I think, whenever he's, like, really pissed off, and uh, he's so used to getting the things he wants or playing the soccer the way he does it, the fact, so, like, when he isn't allowed to or when he can't do it, he's, he's like, just super pissed off really intense man i like i like his swag you remember like vegeta or something you know what i mean just really like cutthroat and really like you know calling isagi a donkey and stuff like that like jesus disrespect you know what i'm saying like calling my boy a donkey but hey man he could back it up for the most part on the field and uh i'm really interested to see how he does uh in the second season the other character i want to talk about was rin mentioned him earlier the one that's based off of uh mikasa and aaron's kid his story is like really dope we don't really see much of him it's almost like a scarcity effect with him where you don't really see him as much but when you do see him you're kind of like oh you know and there's kind of this aura that goes on where it's kind of like oh rin's here you know and he's ranked number one in the uh blue lock i forgot to mention that in blue lock everyone's ranked by a number i believe he's number one i don't know if he's number one off the bat but i know he's number one like by the end of the show, or by the end of the first season, rather. So, yeah, I mean, just a really cool character, real swaggy, like I said earlier. Tons of, like, like, his, his like, presence is really felt, you know what I mean? Where everyone else is kind of like, whoa, you know? And he, he kind of is always ahead of the curve in terms of the other players. Um, and honestly, the thing with his brother, the fact that, like, his whole goal is to, like, top his brother, um, or, like be on the national team i believe his whole thing is like a competitiveness with his brother um and i believe they i don't know if they're gonna interact his brother is shown as someone who doesn't want to play for the national team i believe for japan um so yeah i'm really interested to see where they go with that rin's like a really cool character man like i say his design is clean as hell he's just an interesting guy they show him meditating they show him doing yoga after uh after games and stuff like that asagi's just like trying to be him you know asagi's always trying to like not mirror him but he's like you know tagging along for the ride like yo how do you do this how do you do that asking him all these questions i love how rin's just kind of like nonchalant like i forgot what he says he says like a phrase like you're playing like little league soccer basically you know what i mean i'm playing like professional you know what i mean um and there was actually something interesting that happens towards the end of the season uh where you kind of see rin you know, be on that Asagi slash uh, kind of be where the other characters were, where they're kind of like frantic and like desperate to like do something during a game. And you kind of see that a bit from Rin, uh, literally towards the last episode, um, which I found really interesting. So I'm, I'm curious how he, he progresses, uh, in season two. You know, I talked about the auras earlier. I want to mention Asagi's once again, Asagi's aura is really well done. Um, I actually wrote some down. Let me see. I like the Sagi's aura. I like Baru's aura. Like I said, with the tiger, 
or the lion, I can't remember what it was. Uh, Chigaris, the red panther, which, to be honest with you, when I first thought of it, I was like, you know, his hair is pink. So I'm like, what? you know, I was like, why do they call him the red panther, not the pink panther? But it clicked on my head, like, for copyright reason, they probably can't call him the pink panther, which I found funny. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he, his aura is really dope as well when he speeds up and he just, like, takes off like a bullet. Uh, really, really well done. Bachi does as well, his kind of monster aura that he has, where like he has this, I want to say a voice, but he has like a monster kind of following him, meaning that like, his love of soccer, stuff like that, or, or he would always play soccer by himself, he would get made fun of, um, I don't know if I talked about that in the in his episode, but in, in his episode he was kind of like, not picked on, but he was kind of like called a weirdo and stuff like that, just because he really, all he wanted to do was just play soccer, and often would play like by himself, because kids were kind of like, they just would want the kids around him would just want to play video games or just go inside or something and he's like yo soccer's the best and everyone kind of like crapped on him for it but he has like this monster aura that follows him around whenever he's playing and it's really really interesting it's kind of like a dust cloud to be honest he's like a cloud over him and nagi nagi is like a, a really really interesting character i don't know if i touched him other than mentioning that he looks like kalua from hunter hunter but um he is like this really interesting guy who like doesn't even care when you first introduce to him he doesn't even care about soccer he's like laying down he's tired all the time he's like why do we have to do this why do i have to put effort on it very like he kind of reminded me of like l from death note just kind of like i don't know l was more motivated to be honest with you but that kind of like chill vibe he's just really really chilling the whole time uh but he's very talented at soccer uh definitely a natural to be honest with you and uh to see like just to see nagi progress into this guy who like at first didn't care to like by the end of the show he's like all about it and like chips all the way in you know what i mean he's just ready to like be the best in the world at this um and he's competing he's competing with people on his team he's like really about it so uh just to see that arc in his character was really really interesting and apparently there's going to be a movie about him. And apparently there's like a separate manga f- that's just on Nagi. Um, which I don't know, man. I'm really like, I'm conflicted because like, I'm not sure when season two is going to get released. Um, hopefully the end of this year or maybe early next year. But like, I don't know if I read the manga, you know what I mean? I don't know if I should like start reading it. Let me know in the comments if you've read the manga, if you like it or not. But my brother loves it, but I kind of do enjoy just watching the anime but I just don't want to be spoiled on anything, you know what I mean? I really don't want to, like, catch any spoilers, which, I mean, it's a sports anime, so I don't know how, what I would really deal with, you know what I mean? But, I don't know, you know, it's it's something that I would, uh, I'm definitely interested in, to be honest with you, but apparently, like I said, he's gonna get a movie, uh, that's just gonna be focused on him, that's based on a manga that's just focused on him, so I'm really interested in that. I forgot the name of it, I think I wrote it down, let me see. Yeah, so apparently the movie will be called Blue Lock, dot, dot, well, not Blue Lock, dot, dot, but Blue Lock, episode Nagi, um, which I guess is going to focus on him and in school, maybe, and him and Rio, um, which should be interesting. Like I said, his his uh, his story is very fascinating, and um, his sh- he gets intense, man. He, he's an intense guy when he, like, wants to be, and his uh, ball control with the soccer ball is really, really interesting to see. All in all, guys, I really enjoyed Blue Lock. Uh, I thought it was a fun anime, fun sports anime. I, like I said, I haven't watched many of those, but definitely it's me uh, motivated to finish Megalobox Season 1 and Season 2, uh, which I'll probably do separate reviews for that. I don't know if I should review both of them uh, in one review, but I'll probably do separate ones for those. Um, yeah, I had a phenomenal time with it, man, really. It was a really interesting show. Recommend it for sure. Um just a fun ride, just an easy watch, fun ride, I mean, oftentimes, me and my brother would get off of work, and he stays with me, so, like, we'd, he's like, yo, let's watch episode of Blue Lock, and at first, to be honest with you, I was kind of like, eh, do I really want to do that, do I really want to want to do it, you know what I mean, kind of like, eh, and I watched one, watched two, and, <laughs> dude, there was times where, like, we'd come home, and he's like, yo, you trying to watch episode of Blue Lock, we could watch one or two, and we'll end up watching, like, three or four, you know what I mean, in one sitting, so, it's definitely an addicting anime. It's only 22 or 24 episodes, I believe. So it isn't that long. Um, so it's definitely worth the watch. I highly recommend it. Um, thank you so much for watching this review and making it to the end. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. Subscribe. 
um turn on the notification bell so weird i always hear people like say that in videos but like the fact that i'm saying it now is kind of odd uh because in my podcast i just throw the audio and video up together so it's i never really say you know subscribe or leave a like stuff like that so if you can i would really appreciate it uh comment down below any recommendations for other shows or other animes that i should watch uh, other sports animes that i should watch um i know ipo is one the boxing that's another boxing one um which I don't even know where to watch that at, bro. Like, I know there's the old version. I've seen clips and I was like, this is pretty clean. But like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where like it's streaming. Maybe it's on like Crunchyroll or something. But anyway, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you so much for watching this review. Uh, I've been Cesar Perez. And uh, until next time, peace.